Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna have a look at the February Smart Art Box. The theme was Venetian masks, and there's a really cool thing they're doing now. If you love one of these kits that I show you, they're actually ordering more for people to custom order. In case you don't wanna subscribe, but you love what's in a kit, you can order it. Smart Art now ships to more countries as well, so I'll put a list of all the countries, 14 of them, that they ship to in the video description so you can see if you can get this box sent to you. So the first thing that comes in this kit is an instruction leaflet. It tells you about the products that comes in the kit and also a little bit of art history, which is really handy if you want to learn a little bit more or maybe if you're a teacher and you want to adapt some of these lessons to your classroom. The kit comes with two masks and they seem to be some sort of paperboard. They take paint beautifully and they're really wonderful. The elastics come with them. I recommend taking them off before you paint so they stay nice and neat. The kit also comes with some of my favorite acrylics, the Turner Acro Gouache. I love it because it's opaque, really super pigmented and bright and has a nice toothy surface. So if you decided you wanted to collage over it or do some colored pencil over it, it would totally take that medium. And that's what's great about the Smart Art Kits. If you have the colored pencil kit from last time, last month, you can use that right over the mask. It comes with two ebony splendor brushes, which I've used for the first time today and I really enjoyed them. They have a nice snap, they're great for acrylics and a really great brush control there. Last in the box is a bottle of Creative Mark glitter glue, and I have some tips on using that when we get to that time in the tutorial. I actually had a bit of trouble and ended up using it as a glaze instead of an accent, but I still love the way the mask came out anyway. Now let's get started. My first inspiration for the Venetian mask was to have kind of like a Venetian plaster look to it, and I wanted some brown paint, but I didn't have any, so I decided to mix my own. So I started with two opposite colors, red and green, got kind of a gray, added some white to it, then added some yellow, a little bit more red, and a little bit of blue until I had a nice brown. Then I made um, a pile of color that had a little more yellow in it and one with a little more white in it, and I decided to use those colors for my base. Normally I would have grabbed a sponge for this technique, but I wanted to stick to the supplies in my kit and stuff we'd all have around when we were painting. So I took a paper towel and just scrunched it up and then I dipped it into the paint that I had mixed. And then I'm simply gonna pounce that onto the mask to give it that mottled Venetian plaster texture. Just go ahead and do the entire mask in this fashion. After I had the front of the mask coated with paint, I added a little black to that brown that I had made and loaded it up on my round brush that came in the kit and dragged some squiggly lines across the mask to look like either um, marbling or to look like cracks in plaster. Now when I'm holding the brush, what I'm doing is I'm kind of twirling it, twisting it, I'll lay it down on its side a little bit. Basically what I want is an uneven, random kind of line. Now since I'm kind of thinking of like cracks in plaster or marble, I am making all of my lines kind of go in that same diagonal direction. They don't have to be perfectly parallel, just kind of have them going the same way. Don't worry if you put too many lines down there because we can actually sponge more of the background color on after if we think we've put too many stripes. Now for the fun part, we get to decorate. Now I was really curious as to how these colors would mix and I'm using some of the blue and red and I got a lovely purple. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of white to make it a little bit more lavender and lighten it up. And we're gonna go ahead and add some detail around the eyes. I'm simply dragging a long stripe along the top ridge of the eye. If your paint doesn't wanna flow, you can either go pick up more paint or add just a little bit of water into the paint and that will help it flow. Don't worry about adding too much water. You can actually thin it up to 30% without it affecting the bonding aspect of the paint. You can see here how it wants to drag a little bit. I could add a little water at that point. Also, I recommend being comfortable when you paint. Turn the mask so that it's easy for you to get in where you need to paint. This is a small three-dimensional item. It's totally fine. To turn it this way and that so you have a comfortable painting experience. Then I used black paint to do the same thing to the bottom rims of the eye openings. Next, I painted a diamond at the top point of the mask. If you're doing the other mask, you may wanna choose a different decoration because it won't have that floor de lis at the top. And then I just filled it in with red paint. You can see how well this covers because typically with acrylic paints, when you're doing a bright color like red, um, it'll be very transparent. But one of the wonderful properties of gouache is that it's opaque and highly pigmented. So this acrylic gouache is really wonderful for um, home decor or folk art type of um, applications like this. Keep adding to your design as you see fit. I'm thinking rubies and emeralds and just using those jewel tones to their full advantage. 
Now this is a fun technique and you can totally do this. I just dipped the end of the larger brush in the yellow paint and I'm just making dots. Now you can do this with um, pencil erasers or Q-tips or um, barbecue skewers, whatever you have. And it's just such a fun way to make either uniform or graduated dots. I thought they'd also look really nice around the eyes over the kind of purple stripe that I put there. And it's so easy. Now again, if you want larger dots, just find a larger point. I wanted to add some detail to the bottom of the mask, so I'm mixing up some red and yellow and just a little touch of white to tone it down, and you can see it makes a gorgeous orange. That's one of the things I was really impressed with on these colors was how well they mixed. I know I reckon that the uh, yellow and blue wouldn't make a great green because they included a green, but actually I didn't mix a green, so I'm not sure. So I started off with kind of like a mustache stroke on one side, then I turned my mask over because I have an easier time to paint the right sides of things if I then turn my mask around and paint the other side, I have a much easier time. I do the same thing when I'm sketching vases or anything symmetrical. It just really helps me to turn my paper around or my mask around or whatever and just repeat the process. And I wanted to have it kind of decorative, so um, I added a couple swirls off of the main swirl. And then after looking at that, I thought it looked kind of like a deranged mustache, so I decided that I would go ahead and paint the nose area to make it look kind of like a fanciful bird's beak. Then while the paint was still wet, I added a white highlight to the top of the beak and blended it out on the sides. I also put a little yellow in there because I thought the white was just a bit much and I just kind of feathered back and forth until I felt like I had a nice color and a nice blend going on. Now here's where things got a little bit tricky on this project. I'm using some glitter glue here and I thought I would like to get some dimensional raised glittery areas on my mask. And I knew that the um, glue inside the glitter glue would be clear and then I'd have the bronze glitter showing through. But what I didn't, um, there's a couple things I didn't anticipate. One is that the glitter glue isn't really gonna hold its peak very well and it's gonna wanna kind of um, ooze out of its shape that you put it down in. The other thing I didn't realize was that I had had this glitter glue standing upright on my table. Really, before you use this, you wanna put this like in a cup so it's tipped down, so it can kinda of sit tipped down and that glitter can settle down into the nozzle instead of being all at the bottom of the container because you can't really shake it out. So it was very apparent after um, a couple minutes of having this glitter glue down that it was just gonna start sliding and dripping and running everywhere. Well, you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So to remedy my drippy glitter glue problem, I just grabbed my um, large flat brush that came in the kit, and then I squirted some of the glitter glue onto my nonstick craft surface that I've been using as a palette this whole um, this whole lesson, and I decided to glaze over my entire mask with the glitter glue. And because I hadn't thought about putting the glitter glue bottle tip down in a cup to let all the glitter settle yet, my glazing was a lot more um, clear and gluey rather than glittery. So I actually ended up shaking it down, getting out some more glitter and giving it a final glaze. Now let's take a look at how it looks when it is dry. As you can see, I ended up with a nice glittery coating after all, and it did give it a nice sheen from the glitter glue. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. If you'd like to get this kit for yourself, you can find it at smartartbox.com. You can order this kit, or you can subscribe and get a mystery box of supplies delivered to your home every month. Now, here are the countries that you have now delivering to. The United States, Canada, the UK, Ireland, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland, and Austria, and who knows, maybe they'll add your country next. Check out the link in the video description to find out more information and how you can subscribe to Smart Art Box today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting!